Temporary, and we have returned again for the newest exciting episode of Littlest Pet Shop. I am Theme, and with me is... But of course, comrade, we cannot forget about Downloads Big. And... Of course you cannot forget about the great CC Trainer Ling. So, let's, let's get this party started, shall we? Choose your episode. Ivan the Terrific! So this is the episode, so check it out. Check it out! This week's episode is Ivan the Terrific. A pun on the name Ivan the Terrible. Both Russian characters here, but not the point. Th- so the plot here is Blythe tries to help young me in her search for the perfect pet, a task much harder than they think. Meanwhile, the pets in the day camp befriend a circus bear named Ivan, who is trying to hide from a circus animal control officer until his owner finds him. The first positive we have is young me and Blythe, because I thought they had an interesting plot going on, because now I f- there's another subplot that we found out. Young me wants to get a pet, so that's quite interesting. Yeah, it is actually. According to what I've heard from some people, I guess they technically thought Buttercream was her pet, but Buttercream is her aunt's pet, or Aunt Christie's pet, so she wants one of her own. Yeah. And this, and it's kind of, I guess, it's going to be another, another overarching plot on this uh, season right now, no? Dummy's free of Rush, but also, where do sugar sprinkles come into all of this? Because I'm, if I recall, sugar sprinkles wasn't mentioned. It might be Aunt Christie's pet. Aunt yes. Christie, but they didn't mention sugar sprinkles. Or maybe it's... Maybe she's a- or maybe it's just a cat that just lives in the truck because reasons. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, uh, what about sugar sprinkles? Hmm? Yeah, it's sugar exactly. sprinkles, man. They get in sugar sprinkles. At least I don't think they mentioned sugar sprinkles. I only remember them saying it's bug cream. Now I'm just like, what about sugar sprinkles? Maybe sugar sprinkles doesn't want an owner, you know? Maybe you can tell. She just wants to, like, go out in the world. She wants to go to Woodstock. <laughs> 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 and Burning Man! <laughs> burning Man! Mm. I don't think that's how it goes, but yes. But this was a very interesting one because trying to find a pet for young me turned out to be very difficult, but we had some interesting pets. Like, I honestly really liked the poodle. I loved the poodle. She was just so, so weird and adorable. Voiced by Tavis and Jermaine. I really loved the voice she gave it because she just like. I really like squeaky toys. They they take me to my happy place. <laughs> that is one insane poodle. <laughs> I like when her eyes go really tiny as well. Like her pupils like really dilate when she says that. And so it's like it just adds to the weird creepiness of that. And <laughs> and Blythe and Young Me's reaction just completes it when she's like, Ah, uh, yeah, I don't know how to react to that. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I just. <laughs> One day that poodle will find a pet owner and it'll be great because he'll have squeaky toys and be into elves and fairies and all that good stuff. I was like, I would adopt that poodle because of how cute she was. <laughs> well, I for one would not adopt that poodle. I would much rather adopt that gerbil. That thing is swall. <laughs> just like me. Well. <laughs> just keep, just keep stroking the ego there. I will. <laughs> Put some syrup on it, eat it, because, you know, let go of my egos. No one really knows. <laughs> 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 I thought it kind of funny, but I didn't understand the reference, but it was funny. Also, I, another fun fact Kathleen Bob was that gerbil. Yeah, you, that gerbil's like, I work out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a mus- I'm like a mostly gerbil and stuff. <laughs> You know, I'm going to be honest, uh, I thought that gerbil would have been perfect because he works out and then he likes the food that young me doesn't. So if they actually give her that food, she could just give it to the gerbil and boom, right there. Exactly. I mean, I could see Jasper owning that gerbil for some reason. I don't know why, I I just see Jasper owning that gerbil. I see Jasper owning the poodle since he probably has sweet toys and he's secretly into... Lord of the Rings and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, well, it was his was name, Dragonfire. Dragonfire. <laughs> I think that would work a lot better for that lizard. The one who's soft and as cute as a wolverine. 
or a kitten, whichever one makes the most sense. Wait, it just clicked with me. I know who that gerbil can be perfect for. Sue! Oh, yeah! Yeah, Bacon, you're so great. Oh, <laughs> Liar! <laughs> Hashtag Bacon. He's great. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> Well, all right, all right, we found owners for those three pets, but the bigger question is, who's going to be owner of that goldfish? He is hilarious, though. I know, he's so three-dimensional. Yeah, so in-depth. Secretly, he's, he's thinking so much stuff, so intricately detailed, and so word-like. <laughs> Cece, I'm going to need your help for this. What was the line from Spongebob that Patrick said with the glass of, uh, thing of milk falling over? The inner machinations of his mind are an enigma. Yes. <laughs> Patrick said that? What? Yeah, he totally said that. I think that relate. that's perfect for the goldfish. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that just, you say that like this, it just doesn't sound like a Patrick line to me. <laughs> but then again, I haven't watched Spongebob in ages, so Patrick says intelligent things every now and then, I guess. <laughs> yes, but... Will young me ever find that perfect pet? We don't know, but we do know that she wants to remember the name Ivan. Speaking of which, he is our next positive. A Russian circus performing bear, separated from his owner, and he is a very friendly bear who can do a very good Siberian tiger impression. Oh, I just love bears! <laughs> Throwing that Tess in there, just, just a reference. <laughs> you might be my favorite kind of animal! Weirdest thing, though, but when Ivan started speaking, and just how big he was, I don't know why I expected him to just do, like, a spinning power bomb to one of the pets, just like Sangi. He um, could've. With that strength, the strength of a bear, he could've. But then again, he's just a kidder, he's a jokester, he's... Whatever other word he used to describe himself, but he is probably the most friendliest bear we've seen next to Penny. I don't know, Ivan was a really cool one. I just really liked how he would really explain the joke a little bit. Yeah, I'm Circus Bear, who does, uh... Who circus is, things. <laughs> he's like, I'm a circus performer who is also bear. <laughs> I don't know who does the voice of that bear, but they did a great job. I think it's Peter New. Yeah. Well, it's the man of a million voices, Peter New, I guess. And he must have been playing a lot of Street Fighter to get that Russian sound. I was reminded a little bit of Team Fortress. I don't really play it, but my friends play it. That kind of reminded me of one of the characters, like something about a sand fridge or something. <laughs> Wait, you, you mean like the big gun or the heavy gun guy or something? I think so. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I don't play it, but all I know is he sounds a little bit like that. I like a sand fridge. <laughs> If someone uh, if someone's listening, they should probably do that bear, Ivan, with either the Team Fortress heavy gun look, or with like the Zangief attire. I think that would be awesome. Oh, why not both? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Ivan is awesome, but Beam, could you do the honors of introducing the next positive? But of course, my darlings. I shall introduce her. She's my fabulous darling, Twombly. Yes, so I think Twombly, for me, personally, Twombly's still the episode for me, but the poodle came close with her weirdness, but Twombly for me, personally. Because she just... All the stuff she does in this episode just really made me laugh with her Twombly lingos. That's what I'm going to call them now, Twombly lingos, because nobody else speaks like that. Hurling harpsichords! <laughs> it's as great as her trying to use slang. <laughs> it's her own little lingo, I just love how she speaks. Like, there's this barking buzzards and all that sort, all that jazz, man. It's... There. It just makes her so uniquely Twombly. And... I just love the way she said, THERE'S A BEAR IN HIS HIS HOUSE! <laughs> I love that! No I one like, else would say that but Twombly. She's I she's the only Twombly. character cool enough to actually say it and make it hilarious. Yes. Indeed. And, oh man, she was such a badass with that, that dude. Clive, I think his name is. She grabs him by the ear and throws him out and... Also, it shows that she really, really wants to protect the pets, because if she thinks anyone's going to try any funny business with them, she gets really, really stunned with them straight away, and that's good. Uh, Especially when she's uh, trying to prepare for the Littlest Pet Street. Oh, yeah. 
She was making the cute little shops, like a little diagram. So, yeah. What are they called? Diagram? I, you guys have a word for it. Don't remember what it's called. No what? Those things, like a small version of something. Oh, uh, you mean a model? Yeah. It's not the one I was looking for, but that'll do for now. <laughs> but I do like the part where she's kind of, she's talking about it, and then she's like, like this is how it looked from like a, what was it, a bird's eye view or a flying lizard? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like, only Twombly. She really wants to show to Fisher and see how jealous Fisher gets of her. <laughs> and she does that, like, <laughs> thing with her hands. Like, I, I don't even know how to describe that. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that before she does anything like that, she has to always make sure that she has a height, claw, and fang limit on guest pets. That running joke. Yeah. Life then, then did that joke as well. <laughs> Does that mean we're not going to see any Siberian tigers anymore? In the, well, ever in the pet shop because that, you know, that claw and fang limit now? No Siberian tiger. Forget the yes. tigers. I want to see more of, of those mad clown horn skills. <laughs> yes. I have no idea how she figured that out. How does even one even learn that? What? This, this is secret things to Twombly. We just... We, I don't even know if we'll ever find out, but how does she, How or why would she ever need to know how to interpret like, a clown's horn? Well, she did say she went to college, but it might have been a clown college. <laughs> I don't know, because she's obviously done a lot in her time, because she has a lot of talents. Like, random talents like that, and it's just like... just comes out like... In like episodes like this, and you just randomly see it, it's like, oh, so Twombly can interpret eight clown swords. Well, this book was talking about Twombly getting rid of Clive, but speaking of Clive, the dude that she throws out of the shop, but yes, Clive is all negative. Yeah, I really did not care for Clive that much. I mean, I'm not gonna say he's the worst character in this show and that he just shouldn't be here because otherwise there wouldn't be a conflict, but I will say that his title is very misleading. He's saying that he is an animal control officer, but at the end you find out that his title doesn't exactly match his actual job, and to, to me, I just don't like when they try to make one character seem more important and more of a threat than they really are. And this is just one of those moments that just makes me say, really? Yeah, it really does. And I just, I guess it shows that, well, they were in no real threat or real danger, but uh, sometimes it's a bit overdone sometimes. Yeah. I think Pepper and Twombly summed up perfectly for me with, like, they just do their reactions to them finding out that he was a hat inspector. Like, she was, Twombly was like, oh, really? And then Pepper was also sort of like, oh, really? <laughs> So, so they just seemed so unimpressed, and that was just kind of my reaction to him as well. It was just like, wow, you're just, that's all he is? I inspected this, this guy who was like, who, um, what, like, I, what, does Ivan not like his hat being inspected or something? I don't know, what, unless Ivan didn't know that he was a hat inspector. Well, Ivan did say that where he comes from, a man in uniform is never a good thing for a bear. Yeah. Ah, oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, that's true. So, unless Ivan has never met this guy before, it's kind of strange. Yeah. But really, making a big deal over the inspection of a circus bear's hat just doesn't really do it for me here. This might sound weird, but Clive, for me, had somewhat of a flamboyant kind of voice to me. I don't know, it made me laugh when he would talk. I mean, yeah, he had a, he did have a really funny voice, but, and, like, his, like, teeth were, like, chipmunk teeth or something. I mean, he had a good design, but other than that, and his voice sounded pretty funny as well, but, other than that, his character just, he wasn't, I'm not saying he was pointless, because that's not the word I'm looking for, but it, he just, he was, it was just anticlimactic for me. Just at the end with him. Yeah, it was like, well, he's there for the conflict, but it's just, like, we couldn't just make him, like, have that serious role, like, he just turns out to be an inspector. Like I said earlier, and like you just said, it's anticlimactic, and it's just, uh, you guys kind of do this one too many times. Yeah, we could have, um, we could have had him, like, example, like, he could have actually, like, been 
like some, a threat and then I don't know Tom we could throw him out or something and then we could have had like a joke there with him going like I would have gone away with this too if it wasn't for you meddling lady or something <laughs> Mr. Dale already did that back at the uh, oh the yeah they episode. did with the pet pauses didn't they but yeah. well, I could have done something yeah. like that that would have probably been a little bit <laughs> sorry I just thought uh, it's like uh could have gone away with it if it weren't for you meddling pets, and then that's when we get the biscuit clip. Uh, oh, I roll. <laughs> 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 that could have been perfect. I am your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Clive is not that intimidating, and he's not that good at finding a lost hippo, even though it's right there. <laughs> Hippo with the tutu, like, <laughs> how could you not see that? He's like, well, that, that hippo didn't have a hat. <laughs> or something, I don't know, like, I can't smell it right now. <laughs> I'm wondering, it's like the hippo, like, doesn't, doesn't have a hat, like, like you say, doesn't have a hat. <laughs> but, is he, he's not a tutu inspector, is he? He's a, he's a hat inspector. That's a different story for a different show. <laughs> Time for final thoughts. This episode? I really enjoyed it. I mean, the plots with Blythe and Young Me, that was great. The the pet interviews were just really funny. And I, I love it when the show does things with, like, pets like that. Because I just love the, the, like, the weirdness of, like, all the different traits the pets have. Like, the, the poodle and her weird obsession with squeaky toys. And, well, the, the, the weightlifting gerbil! <laughs> And, um, the, the, the silent fish, and the, was that, a, was that an iguana? Cause it, he looked like the iguana dude. So I'm gonna say yes, that guy was an iguana, blue iguana. And Ivan was a good pet too. He was, well, never, yeah, he is a pet. Yeah, Ivan was a good character. I mean, it's nice to see, like, it's also nice to see a larger pet, because we're used to seeing, like, the smaller pets coming into the day camp. Not really... We don't really get much larger species coming into the day camp, but I guess because, well, it's, well, it's pet shops, so it's mainly for smaller pets, like, uh, like pet shops, apparently. <laughs> yes, but my main positive was Swambly, so she was awesome sauce. And I just... I loved how she dealt with Clive because just throwing him out of the shop and then <laughs> giving him evils and stuff. I, I I like seeing I do like seeing the side of Tombly because it it does add to really funny conflict and stuff. And as for Clive, he was he wasn't I would he was a negative, but I mean he didn't like ruin the episode for me or anything. So I'm not gonna say much about him. He was negative, but that, that was it. He was just a little anticlimactic. But keep this short, short and sweet. I'm gonna go for a 10 out of 10. Jeez, fam, giving 10 out of 10s everywhere. <laughs> I don't know, why are you? <laughs> yes. Well, maybe I will give the same. Possibly. But for myself, you know, I really did like this episode. While it's not as good as maybe the previous two, it's still enjoyable to watch. I mean, like Theme stated earlier, it is good to get a very large pet in the pet shop, you know, or in the, his house, as Tom would say. <laughs> so, so I thought it was really awesome, and the fact that he was a Russian bear, I don't know, it always just made me think of a wrestler named Rusev, because just of how big he was, and I don't know why I wanted the owner of the bear to be someone who looked like Lana from WWE. And uh, then again... Big wrestling fan here. Anyway, but other than that, Ivan was actually a really fun character, and I hope to see him again, but he'll probably just be a one-off character. As for Young Me and Blight's plot, I thought it was a really good plot, especially with Young Me trying to find the one. But will she find it? I don't know, but I really hope she does, and we get to enjoy seeing Young Me and her pet, Blank, for at least the majority of this season. I mean, heck, the Biscuits found a pet already. So, that's saying something. Other than that, Clyde was... Eh, I guess just at the end was the only thing that really bothered me. But other than that, I thought... I don't know who does the voice of him, but props to him. Because that was a really good voice. And I don't know, I really liked it. It was funny to me. 
I'm going to still keep chuckling every time he talks. But to wrap this up for you guys, overall for me, I'll give this episode a 9.25 out of 10. It's a really good one. Really, it is. So, check it out if you have the chance. For me, Ivan the Terrific, it's not really a bad episode. I can't really complain about it too much. I would say that it's fairly decent. Ivan was a great guest for this episode. Really funny, really down to earth. I like that. Mrs. Twombly, best character of this episode next to Ivan, obviously, for obvious reasons. Young Me and Blythe's Pop. Young Me and Blythe's Plot. I definitely liked where it was going. It's setting up another arc for Young Me in search of the perfect pet, but we all know there's no such thing as the perfect pet. But yes, I but yes, I really did like those interviews. They were pretty hilarious. And overall, I actually can relate to that because you know because I've had my own troubles of trying to find the perfect pet, but I settled on a dog because I felt he was perfect. But maybe Young Me will not get a dog. But nah, not the point. Point is, great positives in this episode. Other than Clive being very anticlimactic and not really that much of a threat, I will give this episode an 8.5 out of 10. Not too bad, not too terrible. It's above average. Well, guys, that was Ivan the Terrific. But stay tuned for the next exciting episode, RT3, where we talk about... Seen your day. <laughs> so, so that this has been theme and and of course download bacon and CC Trainer Ling. This is RT3 signing up. Cheerio, darlings. Peace out, home slices. And of course, comrade, we'll be seeing you in the next episode. So, thanks. And say it with me now. Thanks again.